Did you know that God wants you to be well? That's right, that's the good news. He wants us to walk in health in every area of our life. So if you need healing or you know somebody that does, stay tuned. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. My name is Ashley Terradez and this is my wife Carly and we're so glad you've joined us today. We've got a great program for you today. We're talking about healing and how you can receive your healing. You know, it's God's will for you to be well and that's what we're going to be sharing on today. Amen. Amen. You know, there are so many people that are struggling in, the, in this area that we just felt like we wanted to teach on it. And we meet a lot of people actually that come and they're, they're dealing with physical conditions, they're struggling um, in their health, uh, not just in their health, in their physical health, but also mentally, spiritually, emotionally. They need healing in, in all kinds of different areas. Well, you know, if for us to receive healing, we first of all need to understand that God wants us to be well more than we even want to be well sometimes. Amen. You know what? We can't really um, have faith for something we don't understand or we don't, right. we don't believe in. And, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the first thing is we need to make sure that, that we understand the truth about healing. And like Carly said, we're not just talking about physical healing, although that's definitely part of it. We're talking about heart healing. We're talking about emotional healing. We're talking about healing from all, all different types of things. Jesus is the healer. And uh, he came to make you well, praise God. So that's what we're excited about today. And, and uh, we've got some great scriptures for you to share and Amen. some examples and testimonies and things like that. So God is good. Amen. He's yeah. always good. You know, it sounds real simple, but for many years, Ashley and I struggled with this. We grew up in a church background that taught, that taught us that sometimes God puts sickness on people to teach them something. And I just want to, this is like a myth buster, right. right? This is like a myth buster edition. I want to break that lie today because when we look in the scriptures and we actually look to the Word of God to find out what God really thinks about healing, you might be surprised. There are some, there are some truths in here that were new to us at least. Right. Um, we, we'd seen some, some healing in our life. Um, I'd been healed of epilepsy, all kinds of, different, all kinds of different things. But because our foundational understanding of who God was, was that God was an angry God with us, that maybe he put sickness on people to teach us something, or maybe he's just sitting up in heaven deciding mm. if somebody gets healed and if somebody doesn't. Mm. Because that was our church background, that was our understanding, and it really wasn't, it was based on more in church culture than it was on the Word of God. When our daughter Hannah um, was diagnosed with an incurable autoimmune disease, of course we prayed for her. We were people of faith, right? We did everything we could we everything like any we parent we would. I mean, we had prayer trains, we had the, the church praying. I was doing everything I could. And here was my issue. I was like, I'm a loving father. I love my daughter and I'll do anything to see her well. Maybe, maybe you're suffering yourself. Maybe you have a sickness yourself. Or maybe you know someone, a loved one who's sick. And, you know, we'd do anything, right, to see them healed. And this was my problem. I was thinking, if God's a loving God and he's all powerful and he can heal, why isn't he healing our daughter? And, you know, it's very dangerous mm -hmm. Um, to believe that God can, can heal, but he chooses not to. So he's withholding his power in some way. Yeah, and that's where we was at. Mm -hmm. We believed God could heal. We believe it was, you know, God had the power to heal, but he, was, he chose who he healed and who he didn't heal. And that's really, if you think about it logically, that's a terrible situation. It's almost better to believe that God hasn't got the power to heal than he has the power to heal, yet he chooses not to heal some people. That's like you having a cure for something. You could cure someone. You could give someone a cure and you choose not to. That's a form of abuse. That's terrible. And that's what we believed. We believed in the, I'm getting ahead a little bit of some of our lessons. I know we're going to be teaching on this later mm -hmm. on, but, but you know, there's, there's extremes to this. Some people believe in one extreme, they'll believe, well, you know, we pray and uh, God chooses. Sometimes he heals, sometimes he doesn't. And then the other extreme is, well, it's, you know what, God even puts sickness on people to teach him something. And we was even going down that route. People were saying to us, well, what did you do? Maybe you did something and this is God's judgment on you. Or maybe God's going to teach you something for your daughter being sick or for your daughter dying. And I had all this going on in my mind, I had all this going on in you know, my emotions. It was, a, it was a terrible time because, like I said, I was confused. God was a loving God, but yet he wouldn't heal my daughter. Why? What was, what was going wrong? Why wouldn't he heal my daughter? And um, it's great to unpack and realize the truth about God. Yeah. The truth is that it's God's will to heal every time. God's a good God and he only does good things. Now, I know if this is the first time you've heard this, you might say, Ashley, I've got a lot of questions. What about the Old Testament? What about when people aren't healed and things like that? 
Stay with us. We're going to cover a lot of that in this series. But I want you to know, as we start off, it's God's will to heal. God is a loving God. He is a good God and He wants you well. And that's His will for you. His will is for you to be healed. That's right. And, you know, this isn't just a nice idea. This isn't just something we decided to cook up one Sunday afternoon. Like we need to, we need to, we need to prove that God is good somehow. No, we can look in the Word. You know, there are a lot of, we have a lot of opinions that we form sometimes through things that we've heard or, or maybe from our experience that aren't even based in the Word of God. It's amazing how many beliefs we had Mm -hmm. that weren't based in the Word of God. I've heard someone put it this way. They said, you know, sometimes we don't let the Word of God get in the way of our doctrine or Mm -hmm. get in the way of what we believe. And a lot of what we believe, we realized we just picked it up from religion. We just picked it up from churches we've been to and things we believed when really it wasn't even in the Word of God. Right. So when you really get down to the Word of God, you realize, wow, God doesn't teach that. That's just been a tradition handed down by men or that's just been a religious idea that we've bought into and it's not even in the Word of God. Right. So it's super important to have our understanding and our beliefs based in the Scripture because this is the truth. It says this in John. This is the truth that will set us free. But only the truth that we know can set us free, right? If if our truth is based on only the doctor's report or only on something that we've heard or only on our experience, we're going to struggle to receive everything that God has for us. So we're we're at the beginning of our series is here. So as Ashley said, stick with us. But we're talking today specifically about understanding that it is God's will for us to be made well. So do you want to jump in there with that scripture we have in 3 John? Yeah, this is 3 John uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. I guess there's only one chapter in, in 3 John. So 3 John, and uh, this is verse 2. Um, uh, 3 John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. Beloved, I pray that you prosper um, and be in health just as your soul prospers. The Amplified puts it this way. The Amplified says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep in health even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. And this is a great verse showing that God's will for us is, is to prosper in every area, including our right. health and inclu- you know, every area. Right. Why would God write something that says, Beloved, I want above all things that you, that you prosper and be in health. This isn't just talking about spiritual healing. This isn't just talking about our mental well-being. This is talking about our physical healing. God wants us to be physically well. Amen. And um, you know, this is so important. Um, I mentioned um, real quick at the beginning of our session today that I was healed of epilepsy. And that was, you know, that's, that's quite a long testament that we'll get into further in this series. Um, but, you know, after being healed of epilepsy, supernaturally healed of epilepsy in an environment, in a, in, a, in a culture that really didn't understand about healing, I just thought that me being healed of epilepsy, well, I was just chosen. Well, praise God, I'm just the lucky one. I'm, just lucky. It's lo- God just lotto. looked on me favorably yeah. that day. Lotto, God. Sometimes people get healed, sometimes they don't. Right. You never My know number what God's going to do. Or something. And we believed at the time, you know, everything, every minute detail was controlled by God and we'd pray and then it was up to God. He would choose if he was healed or if he wasn't healed. And again, like I said earlier, that's a cruel way of believing. But like Carly said, she was healed of epilepsy. She had grand mal seizure epilepsy. She was on 11 different medications a day. And um, I lived with her, I knew how bad it was. She couldn't be left on her own with the kids. She couldn't have a, uh, she didn't have a driving license. She couldn't drive a car. She has a driving license now. I'm oh, still not sure here we go. if she can drive a car. She has a driver's license, but whether she can drive a car or not, I'm not sure. I don't have an issue with driving. I have an issue with parking. parking. I just abandoned the I car. saw our Jeep once. I thought someone had stolen it and abandoned it. It was like half up a curb. And, and I thought someone stole that car and just abandoned it. But no, it was Carly's parking. So anyway, so, I cannot but she be was healed. Within the lines. She was healed of grand mal seizure epilepsy, and that was uh, 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. Never had another seizure. Doesn't take any medication. 100% healed. Um, our daughter's been healed. Uh, Maraxi healed. She, the doctors gave her a, a maximum of a week to live, and uh, we'll share some of that later. So we've experienced this firsthand. We've experienced God's power in the area of healing firsthand, and we're excited to give you the same truths we learned, so that if you're struggling in that area, you can receive your healing. You don't have to wait any longer. You can receive your healing. Amen. That's God's will for you. Amen. But um, understanding what had happened when I was healed of epilepsy was a completely different experience from just receiving healing. We rejoiced in the moment. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was, it was freedom. It was powerful. It was, it was fantastic. But that because we didn't really understand what had happened to us mm-hmm. and how that worked, we didn't really have our foundation of truth based in God's word. It was only based in our experience. We still had those preconceived ideas about God. So when our daughter was diagnosed, at, well, she was diagnosed at two years old, at three years old, she was sent home from the hospital to die. It was an incurable autoimmune disease. 
Um, we, we said, we, you know, we prayed for her, we, but you can't pray a prayer of faith. It says this in James. Mm -hmm. It says the prayer of faith will save the sick, will heal the sick. You can't pray a prayer of faith unless you know it's God's will. Yeah. And so even though we prayed for Hannah, we, we laid hands on Hannah, um, we, we prayed over her. Every time we prayed over Hannah, we were like, if it be thy will, Lord. We were double-minded. Right. We were double-minded. We didn't know if it was God's will for her to be well or not. You and can't pray in confidence. You ca really can't. It's like, you know, silly example, but it's like if you have a dog, you know, half the time you pet it, it bites you, and half the time you pet it, it's okay. It's like, you're going to be concerned about petting yeah. it anymore. We've well, got you don't know what kind of reaction you're going to get. You don't, it's like schizophrenic God. One minute it's going to heal, one minute it's not. One minute it's going to put sickness on you, one minute it's not. And we served a God like that for, we, we were both born again mm -hmm. as teenagers, 16, 17 years old. So we were 10 years into our relationship with God, and we loved God. Uh, we loved church. We were leaders in the church. Uh, we led groups and things like that. But because we didn't have this understanding about God being a good God and because we didn't have an understanding about God not controlling every minute detail, uh, we struggled with our daughter. And you could say it this way. When you were healed of epilepsy, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, you were given a fish. It was like a one-off. You was given a fish. Right. That's it. But we couldn't reproduce that. Yeah. With, with Hannah's healing, we learned the truths for ourselves in the Word of God, and that meant we, was, we were taught how to fish, and now mm -hmm. it's we can re reproduce that. And we've, we've seen other people healed, we've seen our own family healed many, many times since then, because now we know the truths. And really, it's like Kylie said, it might be basic, but once you know these truths, it's the truth that will set you free. The Word of God is what does it, and uh, that's what we're going to be teaching on. Our, all our shows, all, all the Abundant Life programs are all based on the Word of God, because that's the only sure foundation. No, no other foundation, it's the Word of God. We'll talk about our experience experiences, we'll talk about testimonies, but really the basis has always got to come back to, is it in the Word of God? What does the Word of God say? The Word of God is final authority. And when you look at the Word of God and start mm -hmm. un unpacking it, you will have no doubt that it's God's will to heal you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You know, for many years, um, we were listening to a gospel that didn't have any corresponding actions to it. Ooh. In other words, it didn't have any power with it. I want to show you something. This is in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes it. Mm. You know, sometimes we, start, we find ourselves listening to a gospel that has no power in it. If the gospel you're listening to has no power in it, it's not the gospel because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation and not just salvation. Let's unpack this a little bit for a moment. That word power is the Greek word dunamis. This is talking about miraculous, miracle working power. Dunamis, where they get the word dynamite from, mm -hmm. right? Dynamite power, exactly. explosive power, dunamis. Exactly. In fact, one translation, this is the Passion Translation, says this, it says, it says uh, um, I refuse to be ashamed of sharing the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. Unleashed. Liberating power I like unleashed, that. I like that. Wow, you know, and, and that's the truth. When we hear the Word of God and the Word of God sets us free, it has power in it. And that mm -hmm. power is not just the power to, to overcome, but to live the Christian life. Actually, it says in verse 17, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. We're gonna unpack in the, in the following few sessions what the, 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 the role that faith has in accessing the healing that God has already provided for us. But we're supposed to live out, you know, we're supposed to live the Christian life out in our relationship with the Lord. And if our relationship with the Lord um, is based on a misunderstanding of who God really is, it's going to limit how we come to Him for things. Mm -hmm. And so like Ashley gave the example of a, of a, of a mean dog sometimes, um, you know, maybe if we've had a, an abusive type relationship, oftentimes we'll find that we relate to God in a similar way than we do in our human relationships. So if maybe we've grown up in an abusive home or we've had an abusive spouse or just negligent, some, some negligent um, uh, human relationships, we can start to look through that filter at our own relationship with God. And if we don't really understand that God is good and have a real true picture of what a loving father really is, maybe our earthly father wasn't a great example of that, we'll start to relate to God that way. And so we won't, we'll find it very difficult to come to God in that boldness that we just mentioned because we don't know what kind of reaction God is going to give us. Right. And coupled with that, if our, if our culture, if our background as a believer has taught us some incorrect truths that, that aren't even founded in the Word of God, we'll struggle to come to God and really pray a prayer of faith for God in healing because we just don't know what kind of reaction we're going to get from God. You don't know his true nature. You right. know, like Kylie said, you may have had a, a parent 
you know, a father or even a mother who, who didn't treat you with, with love unconditionally. But really, even if you did have great parents, you know, Jesus said, even if you, even a loving parent, even the best parent compared to God is evil. That's how good God is. Mm -hmm. So basically, even if you had good parents, it's still hard for us to understand that God's love is completely unconditional for us. Mm -hmm. And God loves us wholeheartedly, unconditional, regardless of our actions. God loves us because of who he is. And that, that really takes some renewing of our minds. You know, we have to renew our minds to that because we don't experience that anywhere else. We don't experience true unconditional right. love. We, we certainly, certainly don't experience it in our workplace. You know, there's no unconditionalness in our workplace. I don't care how, how much the boss thinks you're, you're great. If you don't turn up on time and perform, you're fired. You know, there's, right. no, there's not even unconditional in, in parent-child relationships most of the time. We could say we love them, but there's a time when, you know, if, if things break down, relationships mm -hmm. break down. But with God, his love for us is completely unconditional. Regardless of how we treat him, he treats us unconditionally with an unconditional love. And, and that really is something we have to renew our mind to. Right. So knowing who God's, you know, who God really is, the true nature. I want to say, like, the, will the real God stand up? Because we've been taught a religious God. We've been taught a God that, that angry isn't God. an angry God, a God that's in a bad mood with us. And it's really not true. God is a loving God. He loves us so much. He's given everything he can can to win us over. He gave his son, his only son for us. And uh, God loves you. So really much more important than, than your physical healing is understanding God loves you unconditionally. And it's amazing when we start to meditate on that and renew our mind to that love, how other things in our life start acting because faith works by love. Yep. And it's, it's powerful when we start realizing how much God loves us. So really the basis is the true nature of God. God is love and God is good. Amen. And he can't act outside of those things. It's not like he possesses love or he possesses goodness and he can put them down and then act outside of love or outside of goodness. No, it's who he is. His very core, his nature, who he is, is love and is good. So everything he does is loving and good. And if we can't understand that sometimes, we need to realize, you know what, it's not God, it's us or it's other things that are the problem. But God's nature towards us is always love and it's always good, praise God. So we have a good, loving Father. We can trust him. He only has good things for us. And when you're trusting him for healing, if you don't know that, if that's not your foundation, then like Carly said, it's hard to trust God with your healing if you don't know what he's going to do to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, it's amazing what will happen. And I meet people um, every day, actually. We, we get people that write in, that call in um, to, our, to our prayer line. And these, these are people that, that really want to receive from God, but they just come from some misunderstandings and background or some misinformation. But it's amazes, it amazes me how willing people are to become open-minded when they have a crisis. Mm -hmm. And this really was where we were at in our position um, with our daughter. She was three years old. Um, she, she couldn't eat any kinds of food. She was the size of a nine-month-old baby. Her growth was so stunted. She'd been through all different kinds of treatment. The doctors really couldn't. Um, she was diagnosed with a condition called EOC and eosinophilic enteropathy, which sounds I impressive. Even, I can't even say it, so I'm not <laughs> going to attempt it. But if you're playing Scrabble and you get that this word, you're, you're going to win the game with that word. <laughs> eosinophilic enteropathy. And basically, like that. basically her body thought that protein was germs. So when she was eating food, her body would attack it. And that wasn't just the only thing she had wrong with her. She had a blood condition. She also wasn't able to swallow. She had extreme reflux. She wasn't able to swallow any solid food. So all our life, we've got two older children. So we knew what it was like for a child to wean and for a child to eat solid food. And Hannah never ate solid food. And even the food we pureed and gave her, she threw up and she, she vomited and she choked on it and she never kept it down. So mm -hmm. her growth became very stunted. Her hair thinned out, um, her eyes sunk in, she, uh, her skin became very pretty. You could see she, was, she wasn't healthy at all and she lost so much weight, as Kylie said, she was the size of a nine month old baby at three years old. She was back in her stroller full time, back in diapers on nappies for our international viewers. We We're go. here in America, but diapers, nappies. She was back in nappies. It was a bad situation. And um, as Kylie said, we, we just didn't know what to do. We, we prayed, we did everything we, we could do that we knew to do. We loved God, we loved the word, we, we got the church involved, but we didn't know the truth. And a couple of weeks before we saw mm -hmm. Hannah healed, we heard the truth for the first time. We got a free cassette tape, and on that cassette tape, it talked about the true gospel. And for the first time, even though we'd been born again for 10 years at that time, right. 12 years, for the first time, we heard the real gospel. We heard the true nature of God. We heard who, who, what God's nature really was. Right. And, and for us, really, the turning point was understanding that God had already made his mind up about, mm -hmm. about healing. That we didn't have to, you know, we'd, we realized that when we, even though we'd been praying for Hannah, speaking the word over Hannah, because we didn't understand, because we weren't utterly convinced that it was God's will to heal, we could not pray a prayer of faith. 
The very word faith comes from the word pisteo. It means to be fully convinced, right? Mm. To be fully persuaded. We couldn't pray a prayer about being fully persuaded because we were still asking God whether it's his will to heal Hannah or not. That you cannot pray a prayer of faith if you're double-minded, as Ashley said. And so once we understood from that simple cassette teaching that God was still in the business of healing people today, that he'd made up his mind. In fact, if you look in the scriptures, Jesus has a healing ministry. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty schizophrenic, wouldn't it? To have half the New Testament with the, with the gospels of Jesus, Jesus going around laying hands on people being healed if that wasn't really God's will. In fact, Jesus is the one that says, you know, I only do what, what my father's doing. Exactly. I'm about my father's business. Yeah, he said to Philip, have you seen me? You've seen, You've the, father. seen the father. So Jesus was the perfect representation of Father God. And, and I heard someone put it this way. My kids say, don't say that, Dad, it's cheesy, but I'm going to say it. If God was to take a selfie, it would look like Jesus. So Jesus is the Jesus. perfect... Jesus. That is a cheesy <laughs> joke. But God is the per Jesus is the perfect representation of God the Father. When Jesus was on earth, even though he was 100% man, he was also 100% mm -hmm. God, and he represented God perfectly. And like I said, he said to Philip, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And every person that came to Jesus was healed. Jesus healed every person that came to him for healing. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't deny anyone their healing, and he didn't put sickness on anyone. So if, if Jesus is perfectly representing God, and then he never put any sickness on anyone and he healed everyone that came to him, then the conclusion has to be, just from that, that truth alone, that it's God's will to heal every time. Amen. And regardless of our experience, sometimes mm -hmm. we put our experience, I know that we were in this, in this boat, if you like, we'd put our past experience ahead of the Word of God, mm -hmm. or we would read in the Word of God through the filter of our past experience. And sometimes, you know, this is a convenient um, excuse for believers, if you like, that, that if our experience tells us that we haven't seen any healing, we haven't experienced any healing, we haven't ever seen any miracles, then clearly that God's not in that business anymore. Well, you know, our experience doesn't change the Word of God. It's been around for thousands of years. Right. The Word of God is still true regardless of what our experience is telling us. So with that understanding, when it came to Hannah, once, we, once those, those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle were finally in place, we understood that it was God's will, he, that He was a good God, that He only had healing for us. He wasn't putting sickness on us to teach us something we were finally able to pray a prayer of faith. And we took her to a conference. We had hands laid on Hannah, but we got into agreement with the Word of God rather than what we saw in, in the natural, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in what was going on. And ha the, the healing power of God manifested in Hannah's body. She was three years old. She'd been sent home from the hospital with a week to live. They, they entered, the doctors thought she'd only week, um, live a, a week. That's why they sent her because they thought it'd be kinder for Hannah to, to pass away at home. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we didn't take her home. We took her to a conference um, and, and just stood on the Word of God and got ourselves into an atmosphere of faith with like-minded believers. Yeah. And this is really important because I know many of you are in churches and you're saying, you know, what you're telling me today, what I'm hearing is the first time I've heard this. My church doesn't believe this way. Our church didn't believe this way either. But when we, were, when we needed something, it, was, it really was a matter of life and death for our daughter. We knew that we couldn't rely on what we were hearing in church. We needed to dig into the Word of God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We needed a first-hand revelation of what God was really saying about our situation. And that meant you know, listening to a gospel, the gospel that we just talked about here in, in Romans chapter 1, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes it. We needed to start hearing gospel that had power in it. Mm -hmm. And that cassette tape that we listened to, it was the first time really that I think we'd actually heard the real gospel. Yeah, it really was. And the true gospel is the good news. It's the good news of God. It's the, it's the goodness of God mm -hmm. that leads man to repentance. When, you, when we find out how good God is, praise God, it really is good news. And uh, as Carly said, we had to understand that for ourselves. Once we knew that it was God's will to heal, then we could set our faith on our daughter's healing. And we'll come back to our, her testimony probably uh, later on and, and explain some more things that went on. But basically, the long and the short of it was we believed for her healing. She was prayed for at that conference and she was miraculously healed. Now she had symptoms come back on her. We used our authority mm -hmm. as a believer. Again, I wasn't double-minded. I knew it was God's will for her to be healed. This wasn't God, you know, uh, choosing to bring the sickness back or anything like that. This was, it was God's will for her to be healed. So I used my authority as a believer. She was three years old. So we have authority over little children, just like you have authority over your body. And I spoke directly to her choking. I spoke directly to her symptoms and they went. And that was uh, 12 years ago, 12 years ago now. And, uh, more than that. More actually. than 12 years ago yeah. now. So uh, that was back in, in 2006. She's 100% healed and well. In fact, um, I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but we took her back to the doctors uh, and they wanted to check her out. They checked her all out and they checked everything. And they even said this, they said, 
we've tried, but we can't find one thing wrong with you, Hannah. You're 100% well, you're 100% perfect. And they signed her off, they were happy that she was 100% healed and not one thing wrong with her. Not that we was looking at the doctor's report to determine that, to determine that, that we believe the Word of God, the Word of God says she was healed. But it was nice to have that doctor's confirmation, if you like, right. to say she was 100% healed. So well, you put it eloquently one way, you said you cannot uh, uh, determine a spiritual position from a physical condition. You can't let a physical condition determine your spiritual position. That's good. So sometimes we let our experience uh, get in the way of what we believe. And mm -hmm. I understand if you're suffering, if you've got a loved one who's suffering, it can almost be comforting to think, well, it's just God's will. Or it's not, you know, it's not God's will for you to be healed. And, and I can understand there's short-term comfort with that. But I'm telling you, long-term, that's damaging to your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that God's a good God and He loves you and He only has good things for you, and you know what? He wants you well. So whatever your condition, whatever you're, you're suffering with or, or loved one suffering is, God loves you and He wants you well. Praise God. Amen. We're going to explain some more of this. We're going to get into some more detail of, of how this works and some practical tips on how you can un unpack this and how you can see your healing or you can see your loved ones healed because that's God's will for you. But I'm here to tell you, you need to get to, uh, to the bottom line of saying God is good and God only has goodness for me. He doesn't have anything bad for me. Amen. 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 God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Now, I know that many of you today uh, are watching and listening to this. are dealing with physical symptoms in your body. And we want to take a minute uh, right here, right now, because I believe the healing power of God is present. It's coming across the, the airwaves. The Amen. power of God knows no time, no distance, no space between us. So we just want to speak, agree and speak healing. Yeah, let's pray um, for you right bodies. now. We want to Amen. pray for you right now, regardless mm -hmm. of where you're watching, the Holy Spirit's right there with you. So right now we pray, thank you, Jesus, for your healing power entering these bodies mm -hmm. right now. Lord, you know exactly where they need healing. And I thank you, Lord, it's your will to see people healed. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, you've paid the price for every person to be healed in Jesus' name. And we speak healing right now to your bodies. We speak healing to your minds. We speak healing to your emotions, mm -hmm. to your hearts. And we say right now, receive the healing power of God right now. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank, thank, you, thank Lord. you, Lord. And thank you for watching. And please do join us um, for upcoming programs. We're going to unpack this subject a whole lot more. I believe you're going to be blessed. There's no sickness too great or condition too hopeless for Jesus. God doesn't want anything to hinder you from receiving the healing He provided for you or sharing it with others. The new Cure Digital Kit compiles powerful free resources that make healing simple. It will unmask healing and reveal Jesus not as a distant Savior, but as your present-day healer. The Cure Digital Kit is a gift from the partners of Teradez Ministries and includes an exclusive audio message on healing by Carly Teradez, digital copies of Miracles Made Easy, and 39 Reasons Healing is Yours, a nine-week email growth track, and encouraging mobile wallpapers. Go to unmaskhealing.com to sign up for your free digital kit today. We want to thank the friends and partners of Teradez Ministries. Your faithful financial support enables us to produce the Abundant Life program and spread the good news of God's love around the world. If you have been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Teradez Ministries. Visit our website, teradezministries.com and become a partner today. We're talking about God's goodness. Healing is part of the package that we get as born again believers. I want my daughter to be well. The facts are God is a good God and God loves us. God wants us well. You don't have to do anything else to receive it other than say thank you. Mark your calendar for The Cure, April 22nd through the 24th at Karis Christian Center in Colorado Springs. Register today at teradez.com events.